Now, yeah. really, you were asked at one time to join Dire Straits. Yeah, Is that in true? the late 80s, yeah. And uh, I turned it down just because I didn't want to, you know, I had been recording for RCA for about six, seven years and not much, not much success, you know, and a pretty lean stretch. And, and this would have solved a whole lot of economic problems and um, would have been a great experience musically, obviously. That's a given. And I knew that. But what it really would have been was kind of an admission of failure that I didn't have what it takes to be a, a serious country artist. And I couldn't admit that failure to myself. So your first love really is country music. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so I said, I think I have something to offer country music, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give in, because that might have pushed me back several years. And uh, so I turned it down, which wouldn't, wouldn't have thought would be the wise thing to do. You probably want to say, hey, it'd be pretty smart to go pay for your house, you idiot, you know. But I took the leap of faith. I took the big. You know, I took the big chance and, and bam, when I call your name, just turned up right after that. And, you know, I think it was, it was luck, but luck created by a great song. And after that, you hosted the CMA yeah. awards for how many yeah, years? 12. You're the one that told Reba to wear that dress that night. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> the one backwards, put it on backwards, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. uh, you got a big anniversary kind of player this year, 25 years in the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. I mean, I have... I have so much respect and reverence for for that because to me, even more than the recording history we've had in country music, the Opry came before that. The Carter family and Jimmy Rogers and Stoneman family, all that stuff came in the late 20s, probably 27, 28. And the Opry started in 25. And the real, the real beauty of the Opry is that uh, it, its point was not to really promote country music, but it was an insurance uh, ploy to try to get uh, people in rural communities to hear, you know, homespun fiddle tunes, backwoodsy kind of music that they would uh, would be appealing to them. And they were trying to sell insurance. That was WSM's slogan was We Shield Millions. And so its real point was to, well, like I said, sell insurance, not really further country music, but as look what it did. Uh-huh. You know, and 90 years later, it's the exact same age as my mama. My mama was born in the fall of 25, and so two great things to me that, you know, started at the same time. And I just have a, I, I adore that place. I love that uh, that Bluegrass got started uh, because of the Grand Old Opry on the Ryman stage in, I think, 46, they say, and Monroe and Earl Scruggs and all those guys formed a band and started playing Bluegrass. And um, I, I, I hold so dear the fact that it's, it's not a place that's only uh, concerned about what's going on today. The the hot the hot current thing, it still have a, has a great reverence for its past, and it doesn't um, it doesn't lose sight of people like Jimmy Dickens and Roy Cuff. They were out there for fifty and sixty years, and on the weekends, and the real core of why that place has been great for ninety years. Well, how are you going to celebrate your big anniversary? Besides, oh, they've cake, got of a, course. yeah, they got a, a a really cool list of folks that mean the world to me that are going to come out and perform that night. I can't remember everybody, but Amy and my kids and a whole bunch of people are going to perform and Rodney and Emmy and just, getting the band back together. Yeah. The whole, the old, uh, all the gangs back together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're such a great guitar player. Do you ever, do you practice every day? Is sure. there a day that you don't pick up the guitar? Yeah. I practice all the time and, um, maybe more so to, uh, to just stay limber and just stay fluid and, all of that. I'm not. I don't know that I'm uh, really hell bent on 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 trying to learn more. I'm trying to actually learn less. I'm trying to. Uh, the point is, is once you 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 go up those early years and you're like a sponge. You learn as much as you can, and then the point is to just play what's necessary and sing what's necessary, and the rest of it you try to you try to cast off, and you you, you say more with less. Is kind of the, to me, the the real point of a great musician is the space they leave in between the notes. Um, let's go way way back. There's a famous YouTube clip of you on bandstand. <laughs> you wouldn't know if it wasn't for your voice because your hair. Yeah, I had, I had hair. <laughs> it was a wig. It was a rug. <laughs> that I started wore, your friendship with Dick Clark, though. <laughs> 
But that started your friendship with Dick Clark back then. Yeah, it did. And, uh, you know, he was a huge part of, of country music with the ACM Awards for many years. And, um, and that just was, that was surreal to me to actually be on that American Bandstand show, you know, and, and, uh, that's, you know, that's what happens when you have a hit pop record, Mm -hmm. you know, is you get to go meet Dick Clark and and write a record and it's got a good beat and the kids can dance to it. (laughs) All of that, but um, what I remember most was um, just how energetic and friendly that guy was, and never, never was anything other than that. Well, a great human being. A lot of passion for music. Yeah, for he America. loved music, and that's what you know. That's what you love if you're musical. You, you, the casual, the casual guy, not so much, but the ones that are into the minutia of all mm-hmm. of it. Then that's that's when it's fun. You're going to promise us we're not going to have to wait another two years before our next Vince Gill record, right? Oh, you might. <laughs> You've yeah, got your own home studio. I do. i got to go work. But I I have the next three records in my brain already. And now it's just a question of finding the time to get in there and knock them out. And, um, you know, I'm getting to the point where I, I realize I don't have as much time left as I've had to this point. So... Time is of the essence, so it, it won't be it won't be a long stretch. I re, you know what I when I did these days that box set record back in oh seven, that kind of I was inspired because I was there and I noticed that three Beatle albums came out in the same year. You know, it was one of the most iconic group of musicians and songs that will ever happen, and and they were so creative that they they banged out three records in one year. And I thought, man, that's inspiring. So that was kind of the the reason behind uh, these days and and that much music and whatnot. So, yeah, I've got I've got an awful lot of a lot, a lot of songs I want to sing and play. Well, that's good news. Now the Beatles have those songs are about two minutes out on the average. So that's the, sure, that's the reason. Yeah. Why. <laughs> uh, one final question: What drives you, Haggard? says that he still believes that he hasn't written the perfect song. Is that what drives you as well, too? Absolutely. And, and probably more so from the perspective of it's, it's inspiring to improve. And I feel like I'm getting better. I think my songs get better the more I write. Um, and I don't, I don't even know that a perfect song sounds that appealing. I think that great art, you know, eventually they just say, it's never finished, it's only abandoned. You know, and all these records, they're just eventually abandoned. We just work as hard as we can. And that's about as good as we got, and then we move on. Um, but I just, I trust my ears in that um, they tell me what's the truth. You know, and it's only in my head, and I'm the only one that can comprehend it and understand it. So it, it, it needs to mean what it means to me. And and that's what it does is is I'm singing better on this record than I've ever sung on any record in 42 years. I think the audience is listening better too. Well, maybe so, you know, and and same with the songs and same with, uh, the way that I play, you know, it's, it's inspiring to, to see yourself get better and never grow. You're never going to grow tired of that. Once I hit that, that peak and I start going the other way, then I'm going to play a lot of golf. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mr. Gill. Yeah, man. (laughs) It's been fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.